grace and peace, family and friends. This is the day that the Lord hath made. The Bible says we should all rejoice and be glad in it. I am so grateful to be with you all on today. Dre Burks, directional lead of this ecology for spiritual formation, this simple church movement, this micro church movement of baptized believers, individuals who love the most high God with all of their hearts, mind, soul, and strength. Listen, family and friends, I am so ecstatic. I am so excited to spend time with you all on today. Listen, as we open up the word of God and to uh, explore how good he has been to us, I mean, he gave his son to live the life that you and I couldn't live. I'm talking about Yeshua to conquer the enemy, death that you and I couldn't conquer, and he freely gave us salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in him the glory of God alone. Today, we're going to continue our sermon series, our webisodes, uh, entitled TikTok, and we've been discussing what it looks like for you and I to wait on God's timing. Specifically today, we're going to move from confusion to clarity. That's right, family and friends. Movement Houston, Movement DC, Movement Nashville, Movement Dallas, Movement San Antonio, Austin, Charlotte, LA. That's right, family and friends. All of you who have logged on, who have tuned in to this week's message, what we're going to discuss is what do we do when we're waiting on God's timing? And we are confused. We want to move you today. That's right. We want to move you. And the fact of the matter is sometimes, sometimes movement requires us going backwards. All movements cannot be forward movement. Sometimes movement must be backwards. Sometimes you must move backwards to identify and to deal with some things so that you can gain the necessary uh, uh, clarity to move on from that moment of confusion. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, sometimes we get plagued by confusion and wonder what's wrong with us? Have you ever been plagued by confusion and you were wondering what was wrong with you, whether we were questioning if it were God or if it is God really we heard or if it was a friend, a family, a person, a parent or an experience that we are wanting to revisit, whether we are questioning if it is God or we are avoiding a decision because we don't know which option literally we need to take one thing that you can remember is that when God when waiting on the most high God I, I need for you all to remember this when waiting on the most high God you can wade through the confusion and move on to clarity let me say that again when you are waiting on the most high God's timing you can wade through the confusion and move towards clarity. God, ladies and gentlemen, is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And whenever God is doing some things, you should not be confused, but rather you should experience peace. If you aren't experiencing peace, maybe, just maybe, God is not the author of that decision. He's not the author of that move. He's not the author of that idea or ideology or that business or that business idea. God, ladies and gentlemen, is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And whenever you feel confused, you can be sure that God is not a part of it. Let me say that again. If you are confused, God is not a part of that. Or if you are confused, it's because you have not turned the pages of scripture and focused on what God says. God is clear, ladies and gentlemen, in everything that he tells you. And he will not and will never give you a contradicting statement or he will never give you confusing information. The confusion comes through other means and seeks to make us second guess 
what the Most High God has said to us. See, it makes us second guess what the Most High God has revealed to us. It makes us second guess what God has painted very clear and he has articulated to us through the lenses and the pages of scripture. But yet we get confused and we forget what God has said to us in our secret place. There are many reasons why we encounter confusion, but we don't have to despair. Why? Because there is always, ladies and gentlemen, a way out of confusion. Every time you get confused, turn to God. Every time you get confused, turn to God. Every time you get confused, turn to the Most High God's Word which will ultimately bring, bring all of the clarity that you need. It will bring the clarity to every issue that is confusing to you. God's word will send or shed, excuse me, light on your path. He will shed light on your path. The word of God, the word of God, is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our pathway, unto our pathway. Listen, we have to allow God's word to shed light in our lives. Why? Because he gave us his word to help us. He gave us his word to help us and to bring clarity when we are confused and we can run to find answers in his word. We can run to find answers and we can find clarity in his word. Clarity but comes when we are no longer confused by the options or the choices that we have. God's word, ladies and gentlemen, is again a light for our path and a lamp for our feet. But many times in this society, many times in this day and age, many times in our individual but also collective lives, our judgment is clouded. It is clouded and we cannot see things clearly. And therefore, when we can't see things clearly, our decisions are impaired. Our actions are impaired and we make missteps. We make the wrong move. You see, a lot of people are playing chess in their lives. And in the game of chess, every move is a forward move. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying to you that if you are going to properly wait on God's timing between the tick and the tock, sometimes, sometimes, if you're going to gain the necessary necessary clarity that you need and move from confusion sometimes sometimes you need to move backwards and you need to address some issues that you have not addressed some issues that your parents put on you some issues that people put on you some issues ladies and gentlemen that your partner put on you you gotta go back and address some things if you're going to move from confusion to clarity while waiting on God's time and clarity, ladies and gentlemen, will come when you seek God because he is the one who knows all. He knows what is making you ultimately confused. So if you want clarity, I would advise you, I would beseech you, brothers and sisters, Houston, Nashville, Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, D.C. Listen, I would encourage you when you are confused, when you are confused. Don't remain stagnant in your confusion because it's hard to move backwards. It's hard to move to the left, to the right, front, back, side to side. It's hard to move forward when you are uh, unsure of what steps. It's hard to move backwards when you are unsure of what steps. It's hard to move left or to the right when you are confused. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want you to just remain stagnant. I want you to move, ladies and gentlemen. And if you got to move backwards, move backwards. If you got to move to the left, move to the left. If you got to move to the right, move to the right. If God is calling you to move forward, then move forward. But however God is calling you to move, ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking you to move that way. Why? Because movement, yeah, you got it. It's, it's life. And there's been times and seasons in my life where I had to move back. 
There's been times and seasons in my life where I had to move to the left or to the right. There's been times and seasons in my life where I had to move forward. But the most important thing, ladies and gentlemen, that I've learned in life is that you got to keep on moving. Even, ladies and gentlemen, while you are waiting. You got to move because without movement, without a flow of blood, there is death. And so the 37th number of the Psalms, verse number 23, says that the steps of a good man are ordered. The steps of a righteous man or are ordered. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you see, a lot of times in life and in society, people tell us, culture tells us, ideologies tells us, keep moving forward. But, but, but the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. My question for you today is, which direction is God ordering you? I'm talking about while you are waiting on God's timing. You see, you want to move from confusion to clarity, but sometimes God is saying move backwards. And you just want to keep moving forward. No, no, no. The steps of a good man, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. And if we follow his lead, and I'm talking about if he leads you backwards, if he leads you to the left or to the right, if he leads you forward, if he leads you north, if he leads you south, west, east, wherever God leads, I shall follow. Because we sing the song that we'll follow. But when it comes time to waiting on God and moving when God moves and in the direction that God is moving, the Bible says that he is a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. It never said that God was going to always move forward. God moves you the way God wants to move you. And when you are waiting on his timing and if you want to move from confusion to clarity, I would advise you. Not to be like those stubborn, big-headed Israelites that constantly complained about the direction and the moves that God was doing in their lives. God knew, God knew the direction that he wanted to take them. But guess what we do many times is we mummer and complain. Well, why I got to go back? Well, why we got to go this direction? And when things begin to get hard while God is moving us, and while we are waiting on the promise, we then begin to move in the direction that we want to move in. You remember Moses was up on the mountaintop and they began to move in the direction that they wanted to move in. And they began to build altars unto themselves. And that's what we do. We build altars, we build businesses, we build things unto ourselves, not unto the glory of God. And we move the way we want to move. My brothers and my sisters, friends and family, if you would just involve God in every aspect of your life, you will find out that you don't fall into confusion every time it's time for you to make a step or every time it's time for you to make a move. You won't fall into confusion. You will have the clarity that you need. Why? Because you have been keeping in step with the Spirit of God. So let's now look at what brings confusion into our minds. Let's look at it. Let, let, let's look at it. Let's, let's explore what brings confusion into our minds. What is it, ladies and gentlemen? What is it, family and friends, that brings confusion into your minds? The reasons why you and I fall many times into confusion is, number one, we have doubt. Why don't y'all just go ahead and type right there in the chat room, doubt. The reason why we are confused is because we doubt. When we allow doubt into our hearts, we become, watch this, double-minded. We become duplicitous. We begin to worry when we allow doubt into our hearts. And then we become unsure about the steps. We become unsure about the moves that we should be making. 
You see, if you're unsure about the move that you should be making, it's because you've allowed doubt to creep into your hearts. You've allowed doubt to creep into your mind, and now you are duplicitous. And even though you say you love God, even though you say you trust him, I just want to let you know, you cannot say you trust him, all right? And you perpetually, you perpetually, you perpetually are doubting him. No, 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 no. We got to move past that. You got to say, Lord, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. I've been doubting you. I've been doubting you. You see, we can't make up our minds regarding two options. Either you're going to do one thing or you're going to do the other thing. And the reason why many of us are frustrated and confused is because we're trying to balance two options. If you're going to do it, do it. If you're going to be in it, be in it. We cannot make up our minds regarding two options. And we waste time considering each option. No, don't do it. There, there are times when we don't see the answers to our prayers because we have entertained doubt. And so the reason why you're not seeing the answer to your prayer is because you're still married to doubt. And you can't see that the answer is right there. You want to hold on to the doubt when the answer to the prayer is right there in front of you. The second reason why we fall into confusion is because of our spiritual inheritance. Uh-huh. See, too many of you, too many of us want to hold on to our spiritual inheritance. And, and we brag about our spiritual inheritance. Oh, yeah, but I'm, I'm the son of a pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm the daughter of a pastor. We, we want to hold on to our spiritual inheritance. And many times, if we don't unfoil or unfold or deal with the things that we learned in our spiritual inheritance, it, it, it will continue to cause confusion in our lives. If you find that your experience confuses you more times than not, I, I, I would say that, that, that maybe it's time to check your spiritual inheritance. Maybe it's time for you to check your spiritual genealogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your ancestry? What's your spiritual ancestry? You see, some of us need, 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 need to realize that our spiritual ancestry inheritance our spiritual ancestry is the reason why we don't know how to worship the most high God it's the reason why we don't know how to trust the most high God it's the reason why we're always confused about the most high God it's because of what our forefathers taught us and everything that they taught us in the church wasn't good Everything that they taught us in the church wasn't biblical. Now, I'm not going to say everything that they taught us in the church was bad and everything that they taught us in the church was unbiblical. However, what I am going to say is that everything that they did teach us, some of those things that we hold near and dear to our hearts, some of that religious stuff, that religious dogma, the stuff that we hold on to, a lot of that stuff we need to get rid of. You see, if you have other members of your family who are also suffering, it is a sign, ladies and gentlemen. If you have members of your family who are, who, who, who are dealing with some of the same issues, if they too don't know how to move from confusion to clarity, while waiting on God's timing between the tick and the tock. If they too are, are dealing with and suffering confusion from confusion a lot of times, it's probably time for the family to break the curse of mental confusion. It, it's time for the family to break the curse that is listed in Deuteronomy chapter number 28. Why don't you turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse number 28. We do read our Bibles uh, uh, around here. Um, Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse number 28, and the Bible says, The Lord will smite you with madness, with blindness, and with bewilderment 
of heart. Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse number 28. Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse number 28. The Lord will smite you with madness and with blindness and with bewilderment of heart. You see, that is the reason why it's time for us to break the curse of mental confusion is because we are bound many times by what isn't found in scripture. We are bound by many times our inheritance. And when we are bound by those things, when we are trapped by those things, the Lord smites us with blindness. So, so you're moving, but you're moving and you can't even see. You're trying to move from confusion to clarity, but you're blind. How are you going to move from confusion to clarity and you cannot see? Blind people need assistance. Blind people need guides. Blind people need mentors. Blind people need pastors and leaders and shepherds. And there are so many of us who are blind. God longs to set you free, ladies and gentlemen. And, and my encouragement is that you would be set free from anything that hinders your walk with him. If you can't walk with the most high God, and I'm talking about walk in the manner that he calls you to walk. If you can't walk north, east, south, uh, 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 and west, listen, when he tells you to walk that way, I'm asking you to divorce your spiritual inheritance next is indecision and the reason why we fall into confusion is because of indecision it's because of indecision it's hard to make up our minds when we are faced with two good opportunities and you're wondering which one to take should I take this job offer or should I take that job offer two men want to marry you Two places that you want to relocate to. Two women want to marry you. What, 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 what option should I decide upon? Confusion sets in because we want all the options. We, 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 we know that we can't have it all, but yet we want it all because society says you can have it all. Instagram influencers, TikTok influencers suggest that you can have it all. And now Instagram is just the have it all Olympics. Who can show that they have it all? Who can show that they have all the followers and all the likes and all of the money and all of the glitz and all of the glamour and all of the, the NFT and all of the Bitcoin? Who, 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 who can show that they have it all? And we don't always, we don't always have to be that way. Because that is what many times causes confusion. See, see you, you, you can't focus on one thing. I've been listening to an, an audio book uh, um, called The One Thing. I forget the, the, the author's name because I'm not reading the book. I'm listening to the book and I forgot his name. But, but, but it's called The One Thing. Uh, uh, Pastor Atiba in D.C., he referred me to it, and, 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 and I, as I was listening to it, this, this all that they talk about is focusing on, on, on one thing. When you wake up in the morning, what's the one thing? We open up our phones, and the next thing, we're, we're faced with all of these decisions. Which email do I respond to first? Which person do I respond to on Facebook first? What, what person do I respond to on Instagram first? No, no, the book is encouraging me to think about one thing. You got multiple businesses. But, but no, but no, what's the one thing? If you got multiple businesses, what, what's the one thing that you need to do for those multiple businesses? If it's sales, then focus on sales. If it's marketing, focus on marketing. If it's administration, focus on administration. What's the one thing? And then you need to assign you need to pay for. You need to ask others to be able to assist in those areas. But, but many of us, we, 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 we cannot move from confusion to clarity because we're focused on too many things. So if you don't have the information that you need, and that's why you're getting confused, it's only when you know with conviction which path to take that you ultimately 
begin to move without any hesitation. So, so, so this is the reason why I need for you all to focus on the one thing so that you can move in the direction that God wants you to move without any hesitation. God certainly has the information that he needs to shift you from confusion to clarity. Let me say that again. That, that, that's one of the things that we posted on, 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 on the Movement Church Instagram. Shameless plug is, is that God wants, he, he certainly has the information that you need to shift you from confusion to clarity. And, and when, 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 when we don't hear God's voice clearly, ladies and gentlemen, confusion it sets in, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, friends and family, movement kids, movement students, I'm telling you that God, the most high God, right, because if I just say God, you, 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 some of you, 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 you subscribe to this new de- ideology that you are a God. And, and, and so, so, so you, you, you would think that you really have all the information that you need to, to move, to, 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 to shift you from Confusion to clarity. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about the most high God. He, he certainly has the information that you need to shift you, to shift me, to shift us from confusion to clarity. And so how can, how can we move from confusion to clarity? And, and, and we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. But I just want to give them to you really quickly. And if you would just continue to watch this experience, if you would log in, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you would log in to our movement lives on Sundays, if you would log in or if you would, if you're watching this live, if you would continue to watch, we're gonna we're gonna really have some discourse and some dialogue. We're gonna jump into this conversation about how we move. I'm talking about the practical stuff. How we move from confusion to clarity. I'm about to give them to you real quick. I gotta take my seat. Number one, steal your mind. Did you hear what I said? I said, steal your mind. You cannot move from confusion to clarity without stealing your mind. If you steal your mind, you will hear from God more clearly. But I'm telling you, much of our days are filled with clutter. Work, email, Instagram, kids, clutter. Number two, number two, slow down. Number two, slow down. Slow down. Number three. I just want to give these to you, and I want you to ponder as I'm, as I'm talking about this. We're going to deal with it. We're going to dive into it. We're going to discuss it, and this will give you the opportunity to talk in the chat. Number three, pray. If you want to move from confusion to clarity, number one, steal your mind. Number two, slow down. I just want to get to know you. See, you want to you want to you want to move from confusion to clarity without getting to know God. Slow down. I just want to get Number 3, pray. See, we're praying without slowing down and without clearing our minds. See, y'all thought prayer should have been number 1. And y'all was were, were, were judgmental. Uh, shouldn't we be praying? No. Slow down. Clear your mind, then pray. Clear your mind, slow down, then pray. See, we're praying too fast. Number four, read your Bible. Number four, read your Bible. If you want to move from confusion to clarity, number one, steal your mind. Number two, slow down. Number three, Pray, number four, read your Bibles. And then fifthly, and then we're going to get up out of here. Seek godly counsel. 
Everybody on Instagram shouldn't be speaking into your lives. Everybody on TikTok shouldn't be speaking into your lives. Seek godly counsel. And watch this. Godly counsel is not always pastor. But make sure it's godly counsel. Hello, somebody. You can get godly counsel from others. There, there are certified Christian counselors that are out there. We have some that are partners of movement. So, so, so you, you got certified Christian counselors, but seek godly counsel. And everybody that's in your life that is godly shouldn't be counseling you. Because some of them were the very people that put the stuff that you need to remove off of you, they put it on you. I don't have time to deal with that. Listen, family and friends, we love you so much. I got to get out of here. I love you. Please tune in to this week's uh, Movement Live experience. Um, I, 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 I deeply love you. I, I, I love you all to life, and there is nothing that you can do about it. God bless you. Uh, God keep you as our prayers. I shall holler. I'm gone.